Hello, my name is Steve Wolf, CEO of Indiana Regional Medical Center, and we're so excited that you're going to be able to join us while we review our last hundred years. We also look excitedly to the future and what's next for Indiana Regional as we want to continue to thrive and grow and be the best community hospital in the country. So many men and women and volunteers who have given their life and their dedication and sacrifice to really make this event even possible. Special thanks to our friends at uh, IUP TV and Dr. Puinsky and all the students who helped to make this quality product available. Enjoy. This is Indiana Regional Medical Center with facilities in Indiana, Chestnut Ridge, Marion Center, Northern Cambria, and Seward we provide the community with quality, progressive, and compassionate patient care. As we celebrate 100 years of service, let's look back and see where we began. Medical services in Indiana County began with Dr. Jonathan French, who served the county from 1807 to 1814. Today, Dr. French is buried in Memorial Park. In the early 1900s, Coal mining and the railroads helped fuel a new round of economic expansion in the Indiana area. The New Century Committee, formed in 1902 to help plan the county's centennial celebration, would become a leading force in the effort for a modern hospital to serve the region. In 1903, the Indiana County Hospital Association was created. A.S. Cunningham, a local businessman who owned the mercantile store in the 600 block of Philadelphia Street offered three acres of land for the hospital. The Buffalo, Rochester, and Pittsburgh Railroad, along with local coal companies and railroads, announced their support. With the endorsement of the New Century Club, the hospital association was revised in 1907 and intensified its efforts. The Revised Association was one of the first organizations to provide women an equal voice on its board with 15 men and 15 women. In 1907, the association prepared and submitted an application for state funding. Unfortunately, the request was denied and the effort stalled. In 1912, the effort restarted with a new intensity. An unnamed businessman pledged significant funding if the community would raise $10,000 towards the project, which was to cost $60,000 or more. John Elkin, John Fisher, Henry Hall, A.S. Cunningham, and C.M. Lingley comprised the subcommittee that helped spur the new effort. The project received a major boost when Adrian Islin of the Rochester and Pittsburgh Coal Company, the unnamed businessman, came forward and pledged $40,000 towards the hospital building. A 54-acre tract of land, the site of the present hospital, was acquired from the George C. Dickey Estate, a local businessman who died of pneumonia at age 62 in February 1912. On October 29, 1914, the Indiana community sees its new hospital dedicated. The three-story structure a gift from Adrian Islin and his sister Georgine Islin cost $125,000 plus an extra $16,000 for equipment. With the new facility ready, attention turned to the staffing and equipping of the facility. This included hiring a superintendent, Ms. Sarah M. Morgert Leventry, and a directress of nursing, Ms. Eliza B. Dill Wyman. In 1915, through the donations of the Islin family, the hospital acquired a motor ambulance and x-ray machine. On New Year's Day 1915, the first class of 14 students began their studies at the hospital's nursing school and would graduate in January 1918. On February 11, 1916, the new hospital faced its first critical test as an explosion at the Ernest Mines killed 27 miners. The hospital's response helped demonstrate its importance to the community. During the First World War, 
The hospital played a significant role in treating soldiers returning from Europe. Many soldiers were served at the hospital. Both Sarah Morgert and Eliza Dill, along with six of the nurses, would serve with the Red Cross or the U.S. Army, most at the Walter Reed Medical Center, working with wounded soldiers. As the war ended, returning soldiers brought home a deadly souvenir, the Spanish influenza. An estimated 500 million people worldwide were infected, with some 50 million deaths. In the first month, Pennsylvania saw 24,000 deaths. The state had the highest mortality rate from the pandemic in the nation. Indiana did not escape. By October of 1918, Indiana recorded over 100 deaths from this disease. To handle the pressures of the epidemic, the porches at the hospital were enclosed to provide additional space. In the 1920s, the hospital continued to grow, increasing the size of the nursing school, becoming a member of the American Hospital Association in 1926, and opening its first operative clinic in 1927. In October 1926, a diagnostic clinic focusing on childhood polio was held with the support of the Indiana Rotary and in its first year would treat 236 children. As the 1920s were drawing to a close, Indiana's hospital was established as the central health care provider for the region. But its growth was just beginning. By the late 1920s, Indiana Hospital emerged as the cornerstone of healthcare for the region. Over the next 70 years, it would undergo four periods of growth that established the foundation of today's IRMC. Despite the stock market crash of 1928 and the Great Depression, Indiana Hospital continued to grow to better serve the healthcare needs of the region. With the growth of prepaid hospitalization and health insurance in the 1930s, a wave of expansion began as hospital admissions increased. To respond, the Junior Auxiliary was formed with an emphasis on providing support for children and maternity cases. In 1931, the first new wing was added, increasing capacity to 154 beds. A major supporter of the expansion was John G. McCrory, president of a chain of five and dime stores. At the same time, the Dixonville Hospital closes and donates its equipment to Indiana. Membership in the Hospital Association of Pennsylvania and its first electrocardiograph machine followed in 1934. But the hospital was not large enough to apply for interns or to issue diplomas to its nursing students. John S. Mack, president of G.C. Murphy Company, became a driving force to address this deficiency. In 1935, Mack donated 1,500 shares of Murphy's stock to the hospital. 1937 saw the opening of a new nurse's home that included a dietetic training kitchen. In 1939, a second wing opened with 50 new beds, raising the hospital's capacity to 200 beds, five times its original size. The Mack Wing was designed by local architect Robert E. Tom. Mack's donations included funding to serve those unable to cover the cost of hospital care. In 1938 through 39, over 3,800 patients were treated with some 1,500 admitted as free patients. With this growth, the hospital could now apply for interns and award diplomas to its students. Polio had long been a major threat, striking numerous people per year, mostly children. President Roosevelt was a victim of the disease. To treat its victims, the hospital acquired its first iron lung in 1942 with the support of community donations. 
As war spread following the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, Indiana Hospital developed a plan to mobilize staff and serve as an emergency hospital base in the event of an attack on the country. With the post-war period came the baby boom. As the population grew and medical advances occurred, the hospital entered a new period of expansion. In 1958, a 10-year modernization program began with a new diagnostic and outpatient wing. Then, in 1966, a third floor was added to this new wing for maternity cases. The new wing would include radiological and fluoroscopic services, surgery and recovery rooms, the kitchen and cafeteria, and other facility support areas. With continuing advances in medicine and the launch of Medicare, the late 1960s saw Indiana Hospital establish in-service education for nursing and compliance training. As a result, the nursing school gained recognition and accreditation from the Board of Diploma Programs of the National School of Nursing. On July 30, 1970, the Visiting Nurses Association was officially organized under the sponsorship of the Alumni Association of the Indiana Hospital School of Nursing and the Women's Civic Club of Indiana. The program would provide at-home services and enable many to remain at home while receiving medical treatment. On Thanksgiving Eve, 1976, a fire struck the nurses' quarters, destroying the complex. While there were no serious injuries, changes in nursing preparation would see the closing of the school. IUP's growing nursing program would fill the gap and become the region's main area for nurses training. The hospital continued to grow, and in 1976, ground was broken for a new seven-story addition called the Tower. In 1979, patients were transferred to the new facility and renovations of the older buildings began. Growth continued in the 1980s with a diagnostic facility in Blairsville, along with the Cancer Treatment Center, the Indiana Dialysis Center, AGH, a partnership with Allegheny General Hospital, and a new maternity facility providing family-centered care. The 1990s saw the MRI, new cardiac and cancer treatments, and the opening of a new outpatient services building in 1992. The progression from its original ambulance to modern EMS care would literally take to the skies in 1994 with the collaboration of Allegheny General to bring life flight to Indiana. The late 1990s would see a transitional care facility, sleep disorder center, and bone density testing would be added along with family medicine centers in Cherry Tree, Plumville, Northern Cambria, Mahoning, and Homer City. For more than 60 years, the Indiana Hospital School of Nursing graduated more than 900 nurses and was a great source of pride for IRMC. The school was open from 1915 until it graduated its last class in 1979. The nursing school opened in 1915. The hospital opened its doors in 1914, I'm sure you're aware. And um, the first class of nursing students graduated in 1918 okay. with 12 students completing the course. And then the last graduating class was in 1979 and there were 19 students in that class. For enrollment, the only requirement was a high school diploma. No entrance exam was given and tuition was free. However, they were put on a probation period for three months. The three-year nursing students overwhelmingly made up most of the hospital's workforce. They worked 12-hour shifts from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
The first teachers were hospital administrators Sarah M. Morgert and Director of Nurses Eliza Dill Weinman, with staff doctors lecturing occasionally. Nursing uniforms have evolved through the years. Though changes have come, one thing remained the same. Uniform dress codes were strictly enforced. Originally, nurses wore a blue striped uniform with a white bib, apron, long sleeves, cuffs, and a starched muslin cap. Our uniforms were so stiff that they stood alone in the corner. That is the truth. And we would peel them apart on the bottom to get into them. And they, when we walked, there was this swish, swish, swish. You always knew when a student nurse was coming because of the uniform. In the 60s, the uniforms were a blue and white checkered dress with a white bib, white hose, and cap. The uniforms were not complete unless the nurse carried a pen, notebook, and scissors on them at all times. The housing for the school was constantly changing and needing to expand. In 1916, a three-story building was erected to house the students. It was a three-story building and the first level was where the classrooms were and there was an auditorium there and then the one wing, the second and third levels were dormitory-like rooms and that's where the first and second year students lived. The other wing was for the third year students uh, and it was a dormitory living is what it was. Several other expansions were necessary over the years due to the continuing increases in enrollment. In 1929, an addition was built, effectively doubling the size of the residence. In 1937, a new nurse's home was built and eventually expanded in 1947. This expansion was partly made possible by donations from Indiana's most famous son, movie star, Jimmy Stewart. In the mid-1930s, a very important expansion was planned. Indiana Hospital was too small to be recognized by the state as a complete training school for nurses and to qualify for interns. John S. Mack, owner of G.C. Murphy Company, a chain of five and dime stores, put into motion a plan to expand the hospital's capacity. The original idea was to build a separate heating plant to free up space inside the hospital. But when more space was needed, Mack volunteered the money to build an additional wing. The Mack Wing, as it came to be known, was completed in 1939. While this expansion allowed the nursing school to award its own diplomas, it also forced them to start charging tuition to the students. Later in the 1940s, an entrance exam was also made mandatory for admission. The three-year education of the nurses would eventually come to include two semesters at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, three-month clinical stays at a pediatric hospital, and a psychiatric institution. They were also guaranteed a job upon completion. Many of Indiana's nurses would fulfill their patriotic duty during the two world wars. During the First World War, a group of seven nurses from the Indiana Hospital Nurses Unit trained at Camp Lee before being assigned to Walter Reed Medical Center in Washington, D.C. to work with wounded officers. When America entered World War II, the nursing school was one of the first schools to enroll in the United States Cadet Corps program, which eventually graduated 41 Indiana nurses. Through the years, there have been a number of key women who have helped lead the nursing school to success. One of the most notable was Nettie Beeler, Director of Nursing from 1948 to 1965. Miss Beeler was a very formative, foreboding individual. Uh, she um, came across as very um, 
strict and very tough, and she was strict. However, she was the kindest lady underneath all of that armor, and she loved her students. She would have done anything for us. If we made a mistake, she always stood behind us. She never, she never put us down in front of anyone else. But then later, she would take us aside and say, you know, that was wrong. During her tenure, the Indiana Hospital nursing students became affiliated with Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Here at IUP, we had the regular professors. We had anatomy and physiology, sociology, psychology, nutrition. Uh, those are the ones that come to mind right now. And they were, they were very tough, tough classes. Another important woman was Ruby Dobson. In 1965, when she became director, the entire curriculum was revised. Under her tenure, two important things happened. The program received their first accreditation from the Board of Diploma Programs of the National League for Nursing. And in 1966, the first married woman and the first male student were admitted to the school. As the 1970s began, the long-awaited Visiting Nurses Association of Indiana County was organized. This gave the elderly and chronically ill a much-needed alternative to being hospitalized. In September 1976, Indiana University of Pennsylvania Department of Nursing began an affiliation with Indiana Hospital for student nurses to complete clinical training there. Soon after, on November 26, a fire broke out in the nurses' residence building. Um, it was Thanksgiving weekend. The good news was most of the students were not there because they had gone home for the holiday. That was devastating to all of us who had attended the school. While no one was injured, the school was destroyed and a decision was made to close the school for good after the graduation of the current freshman class. It was devastating that the school that had existed from 1918 was no longer going to be there. On the 23rd of March, 1979, the 61st and final class of 19 members graduated. As nursing progressed, changes have come to the profession. The institution of nursing has become more gender neutral and the uniforms have changed to address this. The starched white dresses have been replaced by the colorful, more comfortable scrubs of today. Throughout the years, it has become common for nurses to have bachelor and master's degrees. Today, approximately 73% of the patient care staff at IRMC are registered nurses. Nurses have also been given a voice in areas beyond patient care. They are now involved in establishing hospital policies, procedures, and practices. The nurses at IRMC today are more knowledgeable than ever, and the commitment to quality patient care has remained the top priority. Creating and sustaining a community hospital for 100 years requires the commitment and dedication of many. In this segment, we look at some of the memorable contributors to the mission and legacy of IRMC. At the same time, we acknowledge and thank all of the members of the Indiana Regional Medical Center and the Indiana community who have contributed to this success. Community support has been the foundation of IRMC. In the early 1900s, the New Century Club, formed to plan the county's centennial celebration, would launch the initiative for a community hospital. Mrs. Susan Williard would play a leading role, and with the financial support of Adrian Island Jr., the dream would become a reality in 1914. Another key contributor 
is the Hospital Auxiliary. Formed in 1916, it has provided volunteer services and fundraising efforts such as rummage sales, benefit dances, and the annual charity ball, which is in its 77th year. Its service work continues today with the hospital pantry, information desk, patient support, and comfort services. In the 1930s, the hospital would undergo a major round of expansion as the community grew. John S. Mack, local businessman and co-owner of G.C. Murphy Company, would be a key component in the expansion. Mack contributed his time and resources to expanding the hospital to meet state certification standards and better serve the growing community. Completed in 1939, the Mack Wing increased the number of beds to 200 and added a maternity ward. Mack also donated 1,500 shares of stock to create a memorial fund honoring his parents John M. and Sarah E. Mack. The Mack Fund provides for hospitalization, medication, and nursing for less fortunate patients. Throughout its growth and expansion, s and Bank and First Commonwealth have provided financial support and officers for the hospital board. The relationship with s and and the hospital has been a very close one oh, for, for many, many years. There have been uh, some physicians in town who were directors of the bank, and uh, you know I, I can remember two or three or, or four of my fellow colleagues uh, over the years who were trustees on the, on the board of directors, uh, and I guess you know that's just part of being some of the you know, more prominent businesses in the community. Other major supporters include the Barra family, owners of the Northern Cambria Fuel Company, and the Chestnut Ridge Golf Resort, which is named in their honor. The Bork Emergency Department reflects the generous contributions provided by the Bork Family Foundation. They also started Birdie's Closet, for support to women cancer patients. Throughout its existence, IRMC has been blessed with dedicated, committed leaders and staff. Under the direction of Mrs. Sarah M. Morgert, the first superintendent, Indiana Hospital began operations. Mrs. Morgert would also be one of the first teachers of the nursing school, and along with several other Indiana nurses, would serve in World War I with the American Red Cross and the U.S. Army. Adeline Hawkshurst began her career in Indiana Hospital in 1915 as a bookkeeper and served as assistant administrator from 1939 to 1944. In March of 1944, she became head administrator and would serve in this capacity until her retirement in 1965 after 50 years of dedicated service. Well, she's a legend. Yes, she is a legend. She was the administrator of the hospital for 50 years. And when she retired, and I don't remember anymore how long it was, but they brought her back because they just couldn't find anyone to replace her. Imagine that, because no one's irreplaceable. But uh, she was also a very strict, imposing figure. Another key figure is Nettie Beeler. She played a prominent role in the nursing program, serving as its director from 1948 until she retired in 1965. Uh, she interviewed me before I came into nursing school. And basically, I was scared to death. I, she intimidated me, she did. But she was very caring and very dedicated to nursing education, that when you graduated, you knew how to be a nurse. And basically, we were her children. And she really cared about us. And in addition to making us nurses, uh, she made us ladies. Mrs. Beeler established the affiliation between the Indiana Hospital School of Nursing and the nursing department 
at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Mrs. Beeler was known for being an outstanding mentor for her nurses and running a tight ship. During her time as nursing director, her students began memberships within local, district, and national student nurses associations. Martha Copelli worked at Indiana Hospital from 1949 to 1996 and devoted a great deal of her time serving as an assistant to many of the hospital's CEOs. Larry Marshall was added to the hospital staff as Senior Vice President of Finance in June of 1978. He retired from the position in September of 2008. While Senior Vice President, he provided financial coordination, supporting a major expansion in outreach. In February of 1999, Stephen A. Wolf took over as CEO of Indiana Hospital and remains in the position today. Well, when I came down, I just saw an organization that had so much potential and great people and a great market to be in and the proximity to Pittsburgh, uh, the opportunity for demographic growth and certainly the university and seeing some banks headquartered here all really uh, spoke to, um, you know, the opportunity. And so we came down and interviewed and, you know, they were fortunate enough to ask me to come. And uh, so that was in February of 1999. And, uh, like I said, it's been an honor, honor to serve, and you know we have five children. It's been a wonderful place to have a family. It really is a, a wonderful, you know, place at Indiana, and and uh, we think the hospital uh, has come a long way. We're real proud of the hospital, and believe that we're going to continue to be even better. In his time with the hospital, he views his greatest accomplishment to be the family-like environment that has developed among the staff and patients. In addition to strong community support and dedicated leadership, IRMC has been blessed with outstanding physicians who have developed the capabilities of the hospital and expand the scope of patient care. Thanks to Adrian Island Jr.'s affiliation with the Rochester and Pittsburgh Coal Company, the Indiana Hospital provided medical care for minors and their families. Dr. Ralph Brown, who was self-employed in Homer City at the time, was asked to become a coal company physician and decided to take the job. He saw the job as a good way to get started, but often found it draining and extremely time-consuming. Dr. Ralph Waldo was hired by Adeline Hawkshurst in 1949 to run the emergency room and to care for the patients receiving financial assistance. He was called to active duty in 1952 and after serving as a Navy flight surgeon, returned to Indiana in 1956. He opened a private practice and served on the IRMC medical staff until 1999. His fantastic nature earned him a valued name within the history of Indiana Hospital. Mr. Henry Hild was elected to the Indiana Hospital Board of Directors in October of 1963. He became board president on October 21st of 1965, where he served many dedicated years until 1983. Mr. Hild sadly passed away on April 6, 2008. He was 97. In 1967, Dr. Melvin Williams joined Indiana Hospital as the first board certified internal medicine physician. During his time with Indiana Hospital, Dr. Williams developed the hospital's first intensive care unit. Later in his career, Dr. Williams organized the Department of Nuclear Medicine to expand the range of care provided to patients. Dr. James Garretson was a colleague of Dr. Williams when they were residents just after medical school. In 1972, he joined Dr. Williams at Indiana Hospital as the second board certified physician in internal medicine. Dr. John Mills was hired in 1977 and specialized in obstetrics and gynecology. He was interested in all aspects of medicine and worked hard for his patients and the medical staff. 
He was also extremely active in the PA Medical Society. In 1982, Dr. Henry Mitchell's main focus was his pediatric practice. While maintaining his practice, he was named Indiana Hospital's first medical director. His duty was to provide medical input pertaining to problems that arose either in patient care or among hospital staff. All in all, Dr. Mitchell could be called the hospital's medical spokesperson as he was in charge of speaking on behalf of all Indiana Hospital physicians. Dr. Mark Boyku began his career at Indiana Hospital in 1982. He served as medical staff president and the chair of the Department of Surgery. One of his greatest accomplishments was helping to bring laparoscopic gallbladder surgery to the hospital in 1991. In 2012, he became the seventh doctor in the history of IRMC to be granted the Physician Excellence Award. Dr. Herbert Hanna, who worked as a physician at Indiana Hospital, established the Blairsville branch and is largely responsible for the entire southern tier growth of Indiana Hospital. During its first 100 years, IRMC was blessed with strong community support. With this foundation, dedicated and visionary physicians, nurses, and leadership built the IRMC we know today and lay the groundwork for the next century of care. Over the past 100 years, the Indiana County community has helped build IRMC brick by brick. As we look to our second century of service, it is appropriate to reflect on how our modern facilities were developed. As 1914 was drawing to a close, Indiana Hospital was opening. Built on the site of the George C. Dickey Farm, the original building was funded primarily by Adrian Islin Jr. of the Rochester and Pittsburgh Coal and Iron Company. Constructed by the Hyde Murphy Company, the three-story brick building was completely fireproof and housed 40 beds. With the Spanish influenza of 1918, the porches of the original hospital were enclosed, expanding patient capacity. A second stage of expansion began in 1929, with a new three-story wing opening in May 1931. The expansion increased capacity to 154 beds and an elevator was installed thanks to a donation from John G. McCrory. Even with this expansion, Indiana Hospital was not large enough to meet state standards to accept interns and provide nursing certifications. John S. Mack, local businessman, accepted this challenge and led the effort for the next round of expansion. In May 1937, the Mack Wing was opened, expanding capacity to 200 beds and creating a separate power facility serving the hospital. The hospital now had five times the capacity of the original facility. The next major step for the hospital was the opening of a new facility for the nursing school in October of 1947. Funded by a community capital campaign, it included dormitories, classrooms, kitchens, and an auditorium. Over the next 30 years, the facility would serve as the home for the nursing program. Unfortunately, it was destroyed in a tragic fire on Thanksgiving Eve in 1976, and the school would soon be closed after 60 years of operation. The fire was in the lounge area, which was on the second level. Apparently, there was a short in the TV that started the fire. And because there was no one there, basically, it kind of got a good start before it was noticed. In the 1950s, the next major step of development occurred. The community, auxiliary, and hospital funds supported a $1.3 million addition to the complex. Finished in 1958, the new facility enabled the hospital to perform many tests and procedures usually done only in large city hospitals. The expansion included a kitchen and cafeteria. It also includes radiological and fluoroscopic services, along with diagnostic and treatment rooms. 
It also contains surgical facilities and recoveries along with a new laboratory. Despite its continual growth, Indiana still lacked an intensive care unit. The ICU was made possible by the auxiliary after Dr. Melvin Williams made it a condition of his hire. Built in the Sun Porch area of the Mac Wing, the ICU opened in 1968 with five beds, three electric monitoring devices, and the hospital's first crash cart. The most prominent addition to the hospital would occur in 1979 with the dedication of the tower. A seven-story addition, the tower included changes to the public, emergency, and service entrances. It tripled emergency and outpatient areas and added intensive and coronary care facilities. Floors five through seven would become the primary patient wards with 42 beds per floor. With the addition, there would no longer be a separation between male and female wards, a factor that was the only remaining tie to Indiana's earliest days. For cancer patients, regular trips to Pittsburgh for treatment challenged those already weakened by the disease. To address this issue, Indiana Hospital began its first partnership with another healthcare provider. Oncology Services of State College, Pennsylvania. Open in January 1987, the Indiana Regional Cancer Treatment Center was a 4,000 square foot, one story brick building, providing the latest equipment and techniques for cancer treatment. Changes continued in 1987 with the obstetrics and ambulatory care units. Obstetrics was renovated to provide a more home-like environment complete with recliners and private baths. The family-friendly unit would welcome some 800 new babies each year and support the latest techniques in labor, delivery, and recovery rooms. The ambulatory care unit was moved from the fifth to the fourth floor of the tower and was connected by a bridge to the surgery and recovery areas. Some 60% of the surgical cases were done on an outpatient basis, and the new facility enhanced patient care and convenience. The next major round of expansion occurred in the 1990s. Opened in 1992, the first addition was the $1.9 million Outpatient Services Building. A two-story, 18,000 square foot structure, the building would house the ER Fast Track chemotherapy unit, and outpatient physical and occupational therapy. It also provided two educational classrooms and space for fiscal services, accounting, and billing. Construction began in 1994 on the Transition Care Center, the next phase of the 1990s expansion. Located in the MAC wing, the 18-bed unit provided skilled nursing care for the patients who did not need full hospital services but were not well enough to be cared for at home. In 1997, the center received full accreditation from the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations. In November 1997, planning began on the Ambulatory Surgical Center. The new three-story facility was a response to the changing nature of healthcare and the growth of outpatient procedures. The center provided three operating rooms, an endoscopy suite, and physician office space. The Ambulatory Surgical Center was a joint venture between IRMC and Indiana Ambulatory Surgical Associates, a group of local surgeons and other physicians. A $10 million capital campaign in 2001 would help support continued expansion. With the community support, the new $5 million Bork Emergency Center tripled the space available. The unit expanded the number of beds from 14 to 21 and enabled the center to handle 42,000 patients per year. Marking their 100th anniversary, IRMC kicks off their second century with the announcement of an upcoming expansion to their current facilities, as well as the capital campaign to raise the money needed to build a foundation for the next 100 years. 
Indiana Regional Medical Center has come a long way since its start in November of 1914. Today, they have expanded to a vast 40-acre main campus with 164 beds and houses an estimated 250,000 patients a year. Currently, Indiana Regional Medical Center is the county's sole full-service health care provider. Its success is evident in its ranking in the Pennsylvania's top 100 best places to work, never placing lower than fourth since 2005. For almost a century, Indiana Regional Medical Center has provided quality health care services to the Indiana community. IRMC takes great pride in its dedicated physicians and their service to the Indiana community. Honoring the past, these doctors paved the way to embrace the future of IRMC. Hired in 1949, Dr. Ralph Waldo became the first hospitalist at IRMC. With a warm and compassionate heart, he changed the lives of many and left a valuable mark on this organization. In 1967, Dr. Melvin Williams joined Indiana Hospital as the first board-certified internal medicine physician in the area. Later in his career, he expanded the hospital's reach with a nuclear medicine department. In 1991, Dr. Mark Boykew, medical staff president and chair of the Department of Surgery, helped bring laparoscopic gallbladder surgery to the hospital landing him the Physician Excellence Award. Through the years, IRMC doctors have led a dedicated staff who have remained true to the hospital's mission to service the community with quality, progressive, and compassionate patient care. The current staff are vital to the success and expanded reach of IRMC. Their passion and sense of community further IRMC's vision of being the best community hospital in the county. IRMC is the community. IRMC is made by the community and it serves the community. IRMC has no entity without the community. I think IRMC means a lot to the community and region. I think people in this community take a lot of pride and comfort in the fact that they have a community hospital that's able to provide good and up-to-date care for them and has so many different things to offer. We're the primary supplier of health care here in the county. You know, we play a very important role both in providing that health care as well as providing jobs, but I think also because we're the only provider, people look to us to provide information about health care, to provide them with the means to obtain their health care and also I think most importantly to have a relationship with their doctors and with health care providers. Most of the people who work here, come here, are probably neighbors, friends, and also the uh, family of the patient. One of the great things about having the hospital here is that we're able to provide state-of-the-art state uh, cutting-edge technology and treatments to patients locally so they don't have to travel to Pittsburgh or Cleveland or other areas. I think it serves all the basic and other needs of the community. I think it's a great uh, place to be. I think that IRMC means a lot to the community. They're, they do a lot for the community. I think that the community appreciates their being here as a stronghold for medicine. IRMC is fortunate to have a team of talented doctors serving the health care needs of every life they touch with kindness, respect, and dignity. They take pride in their work and continuously deliver top-notch care while establishing strong doctor-patient relationships. What I love most about my job every day is my patients, uh, no doubt about it. Um, I wake up every morning, I'm excited to go to work. I love coming in, talking to people, and uh, you know, trying to help them. That's what I got into medical school for in the first place, was to help my patients and I believe I'm making a difference here at Indiana Regional Medical Center and I hope to continue to make a difference. Uh, you know, particularly as I have my own personal interest in diabetes as I was diagnosed here at Indiana Regional Medical Center. 
19 years ago uh, this March 27th. When our children were little, they used to count the uh, patients that said, hi, Dr. McCoy, and hello, and I would talk to them. And we, they would make a game out of uh, how many patients we'd seen on our outing and then report back to their mother when we got home. Dad, mom, 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 dad saw 14 patients today. <laughs> I love the fact that I'm associated with an institution that's been voted uh, one of the best places to work in Pennsylvania. So who's better than me? <laughs> Any physician... Uh, what, what they love most is uh, providing care to their patient. And the more personalized they can do it, the better it is. IMC also participate in the health fair in the communities. It participate in the Indiana County Fair to make people aware of their health problem and all kind of health awareness. I think the fact that I get to be involved with people's lives you know, not only do I get to help them, I mean, there's a significant amount of frustration that's associated with the insurance companies, with lawyers, with trying to get tests done, but I think the most exciting part is I still get to be involved with people's lives. I get to share their most difficult moments, some of their best moments. What I love about my job is that uh, I, I like working with people every day. I like being challenged. Um, there, there are issues that need to be solved, like helping people work together, like uh, breaking down the silos that we all come across every day in our lives. And I like the opportunity to make things better. The deeply rooted sense of community and pride makes IRMC a great place to practice medicine. One of the nice things, uh, actually being independent, is, is the, the flip side of that coin is that it gives us a lot of a flexibility to, to make changes and to implement new uh, plans and protocols. Uh, as, as a member of the medical staff, we uh, are, you know, all of us keep up to date with the latest technologies and we're able to bring that to the staff and show this and demonstrate them and, and implement them uh, uh, relatively quickly. So actually being independent has really been an asset to us because it's allowed us that f uh, freedom and flexibility in that regard. It's a nice place to live. It's a wonderful place to practice. It's a good place to raise your family you'd be silly not to come. When you are looking for um, the hospital that you would want to work um, in, a uh, few things. First, that you, uh, you need to make sure that you have all the amenities uh, and the tools available to take care of the patients, um, which I think we do. Um, the second important thing is how, is the, how are the physicians that you interact with, and, um, and we have asked some excellent physicians here. Then. What is the relationship uh, that physicians have with the administration? And I think that is probably, uh, I have found, one of the best um, in this hospital. So all these things, you know, make a work environment uh, pleasurable. And, uh, uh, and if you are happy where you're working, you can provide a much better health care uh, to the patients as well. So it actually benefits everybody. This is not the first place that I have worked, uh, that this hospital has plenty of special specialists that you do not need to go outside of the area to find the specialty that you're looking for, that they are very supportive. I have not run into a physician that I did not think was up to standard of care, and if I were looking all over again, I'd come back. When the people come to the Indiana hospital, most of the time they come to their family. Honoring our past and embracing our future, IRMC doctors and staff remain committed to serving the community. Quality care is the hallmark of Indiana Regional Medical Center. Every patient that walks through the doors at IRMC is treated as a member of the family our doctors and staff share a commitment to patient-centered excellence, compassion, respect, dignity, and trust. To fulfill these goals, IRMC provides a wide range of patient services, from cardiac to oncology and family to outreach services at our main Indiana campus and satellite facilities. A key factor is providing these services in the local community to greatly reduce the need to travel for specialized medical care and lessening stress on patients and families. For patients with heart and circulatory problems, 
The Center for Cardiac and Vascular Care provides progressive, high-quality care under the supervision of a board-certified cardiologist. A wide range of services is provided including digital angiography, intensive care, and telemetry units as well as cardiac rehabilitation and vein treatment services. Cancer patients benefit from the high quality of care provided by the Herbert L. Hanna Center for Oncology Care. Serving Indiana County and surrounding areas, the 10,000 square foot facility offers radiation and medical oncology. Also, the facility supports patients and families with pain and distress management, pastoral services, cancer survivor support groups, hospice, and free transportation. The cancer wellness programs, including Small Choices Big Change for breast cancer, provides lifestyle advice, nutritional information, and exercise programs. Regular screenings are held for breast, prostate, and skin cancer. IRMC is committed to prevention as well as treatment. Patient education and prevention information are provided using the hospital's resources and in collaboration with the American Cancer Society. For spinal and mobility-related injuries and conditions, Indiana Regional Medical Center, in partnership with Center for Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, created the Human Motion Institute, which addresses back and mobility issues. Together, these provide for the prevention, assessment, treatment, and rehabilitation of musculoskeletal injuries. Services provided include joint replacement, reconstruction, spine care, sports medicine, pain management, and pre- and post-operative care. Through the Bork Emergency Center and Life Flight Helicopter Service, IRMC is prepared to deal with medical emergencies. In addition, the fourth floor surgical unit and ambulatory surgery unit provides a wide range of operative services in the local community to address a range of surgical needs, including injuries, mobility, cardiac, and oncology. IRMC provides a range of services to address special patient needs. The services support and reinforce the reach of other services provided. For those with wounds that resist treatment, the Wound Healing and Hyperbaric Medicine Center provides a range of services including hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Our Sleep Disorder Center addresses a range of issues including sleep apnea, narcolepsy, restless leg syndrome, and others. For elderly patients experiencing mental or emotional problems, a full range of medical and psychiatric services are available through the Behavioral Health Center. Palliative and supportive care services assist patients dealing with the pain, discomfort, and stress of serious illness. As a member of the National Spirit of Women Coalition, IRMC is committed to quality health care for women. The It's a Wonderful New Life Maternity Center provides state-of-the-art care in a family-oriented environment. The M. Dorcas Clark Women's Imaging Center provides mammography and other imaging services, as well as Bertie's Closet, providing clothing and accessories for women fighting cancer. Using a wellness model of education, IRMC offers programs to empower families to make informed decisions on patients' health and treatment. They offer Mommy Style to help prepare for physical, emotional, and lifestyle changes that come with becoming a mother. Baby Style is a group led by clinical educators. It is a time for fun, networking, and education for new parents. Kids Style caters to parents and children who have unique needs at different times in their lives. IRMC is committed to the health of our community and the workers in our region.
A wide range of educational and support services are provided including centers focused on diabetes education, weight loss, as well as programs in nutrition and food. Companies and communities benefit from a range of outreach services including health screenings, immunizations, and health information programs. IRMC is more than a hospital campus. It is a regional medical center with locations throughout the region to better serve residents. A full range of primary care, routine exams, x-rays, and mammogram services are provided at our Mahoning, Northern Cambria, and Seward Medical Centers. The Laboratory Center at 119 Professional Center offers a full line of laboratory services in an easily accessible location. To respond to the need for medical care for less serious injuries and illnesses, the Urgicare Centers at Blairsville and Indiana provide a wide range of medical services with extended hours. Underlying IRMC's commitment to quality care is the ongoing development of all of our staff. To support this commitment, the Learning Resources Center is open to all employees 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The goal is to enhance the informational, educational, and research-related needs of the medical staff. Indiana Regional Medical Center provides its patients with support services from one-on-one -on -one to group services. They bring quality care and informed decisions on an individual basis. Running a major medical facility is a complicated task. While direct patient care may be the most visible aspect of IRMC, our doctors, nurses, and technicians are supported by a range of staff and volunteers. For visitors and many patients, their first contact is frequently with the parking shuttle provided by volunteers from the IRMC Auxiliary. These volunteers also staff the reception desk at the hospital's front door providing a welcoming and comforting greeting. Our registration staff, in person or on the phone, is often the outpatient's gateway to IRMC's services. These are the individuals who collect and verify patient medical and insurance information and route them to the prescribed medical services. Supporting the frontline registration staff are the records, billing, and financial operations. Often unseen, but a critical part of the healthcare equation are the many technicians who process blood and tissue samples and support x-ray, MRI, CAT scans, and other testing. With locations throughout the county, a team of drivers shuttle medical samples as well as materials and supplies to IRMC's satellite facilities. Our pharmacy staff supports inpatient care and medications needed for outpatient services. Patient and visitor care requires a wide range of services. Housekeeping staff assure the cleanliness of the facilities and are an important part of creating a comfortable, safe, and infection-free environment. Laundry services care for the linens, clothing, and other reusable items essential for patient care. Maintenance staff keep the complex heating, ventilation, and plumbing systems of IRMC in order. And our grounds crew help maintain an attractive campus, handle snow removal, and keep our parking and access routes in the best possible condition. Food services are a critical part of the operation. Our dietitians, nutritionists, and kitchen staff assure patients receive the proper meals and address special dietary needs from low sodium to gluten free. The IRMC cafeteria supports the many members of our staff as well as visitors to the hospital with a range of nourishing and comforting meals. There is also the pantry a snack bar operated by the IRMC Auxiliary. To brighten patient spirits, the Auxiliary runs the gift shop and also supports the nightly distribution of snacks and beverages to the hospitalized patients. 
IRMC security officers are always on site to assist patients and visitors and to assure their safety. The measure of a hospital is in the quality of the hearts and minds of its doctors and staff. The Indiana Regional Medical Center is home to caring medical professionals who have access to the latest and most effective technology available to diagnose, heal, and prolong the highest quality of life for all patients. Quality facilities and advanced medical technology are also an important part of the equation. To provide for this, IRMC utilizes what it calls advanced technology integration. Technology is so much about healthcare. I mean, there's no question about it, and it provides so much hope for patients. Uh, so, you know, we've probably invested $150 million since I arrived in uh, technology and, and physical plan and really that was one of the first jobs when I first got here was you know getting the, the best and greatest of the CT scanner and the MRIs and all those different things and so I think we've been aggressive and we've always tried to exceed expectations whether it's the level of technology we're getting or also the uh, physical plan upgrades that we've done because you know Pittsburgh's close enough it's a viable option we have to be cutting edge in, in what we're providing, and so I feel we've done a good job of that. IRMC offers a complete set of scanning and imaging equipment that allows doctors and nurses to see inside the human body with minimal to no discomfort. These technologies assist in diagnosing problems and determining the best course of action to restore health. Dr. Thomas McCoy talks about his experience with diagnostic imaging at IRMC. The improvement in the relationship with the administration, uh, they are very uh, um, proactive in providing the best radiology services, particularly uh, for mammography for uh, my patients. Uh, the sonography uh, department here is uh, uh, better than, than most. Uh, our CT scanner, uh, my son had a very serious illness uh, some years ago, and uh, when I uh, got scans here, took them down to Pittsburgh, his oncologist uh, uh, comment was that, oh, uh, children must have gotten a new scanner. And I said, no, I got those at Indiana. When patients require immediate attention, help is available at the Bork Emergency Center. Patients are greeted, then moved to the triage area before being taken to state-of-the-art treatment rooms where services are rendered. Medical situations that require urgent attention but are not truly emergencies can be handled by our new urgent care centers. Located in Indiana and at Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville, the urgent care center is the place to go for minor injuries and illnesses. You can go online to monitor wait times or even check in with the urgent care or emergency care staff so they can prepare for your visit. IRMC is also a Life Flight Hub. Life Flight is a reliable, safe, and fast helicopter based medical transportation system. Staffed by highly trained medical personnel and pilots, Life Flight is a tremendous asset to the Indiana community. Patients receive in-flight care and can quickly be transported directly from the scene of an accident to the necessary hospital facilities. When treatment is not urgently needed, a patient might be scheduled for a procedure at IRMC. These patients are given access to EMI. EMI is a web-based program accessible from any computer prior to a medical procedure. These short programs are designed to answer common questions and guide patients to additional resources to address concerns. Upon arrival at IRMC to receive treatment, patients will find state-of-the-art facilities to begin the healing process. IRMC boasts state-of-the-art facilities for a range of medical and rehabilitative services. The diagnosis of cancer can be frightening, but the Herbert L. Hanna MD Center for Oncology Care at IRMC is a spacious facility that offers oncology care in one comprehensive center. 
radiation, and medical oncology patient services, centralized tumor registry, and a new Linux linear accelerator which offers the latest external beam capabilities by using computer-guided beams of X-ray photons to pinpoint cancer cells, which also minimizes side effects. IRMC is also fully equipped to treat cardiac problems in the first Commonwealth Cardiac Catheterization and Digital Angiography Laboratory, which is part of the Center for Cardiac and Vascular Services. This facility is equipped for both diagnostic and heart-related surgical procedures. This is just a partial look at the facilities available at IRMC. The range of technologies locally available can help you with many of your medical needs. And it's uh, proliferated throughout the hospitals that we really work to uh, continue to uh, acquire and maintain uh, the best technology that we can get. Ultimately, IRMC has worked to bring these facilities, services, and medical staff together for the comfort and well-being of the community. The bond between the Indiana Community and Indiana Regional Medical Center has been in place even before the hospital opened its doors in 1914. Indiana residents and IRMC staff create a community of caring, each helping the other in times of need, challenge, and opportunity. IRMC responded to the community's needs during the 1916 Ernest Mining Disaster and the Spanish Influenza Epidemic. Donations from the community funded a critically needed iron lung at IRMC during the polio outbreak of the 1920s. Once again helping the community, IRMC developed an emergency hospital plan following the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. IRMC's commitment is as alive and vital today as it was in those early years. Currently, IRMC focuses on creating a positive and rewarding environment for its employees by emphasizing communication, courtesy, innovation, safety, and teamwork. IRMC offers the community a vast array of services including behavioral health, an emergency medical center, imaging services, a maternity center, oncology care, and much more. An active and involved supporter of the Indiana area, IRMC has expanded their presence with the newly created IRMC Park. This familiar, family-friendly outdoor space in downtown Indiana is a beautiful pedestrian zone located at North 7th and Philadelphia Streets. As part of Indiana's ongoing economic development project, IRMC Park boasts a welcoming atmosphere incorporating seating areas complete with benches and tables, decorative lighting, and green landscaping. IRMC Park hosts community events and serves as a cultural focal point. In addition, IRMC hosts a family fun day, providing food and entertainment for everyone in the area with various events and activities. Indiana Regional Medical Center is an active supporter of many local events including the Indiana County Fair, Lions Club 4th of July celebration, Relay for Life, The Open Door, the Visiting Nurses Association, food banks, homeless shelters, and many other nonprofit events. Pennsylvania State Representative Dave Reed noted how important IRMC is to the local community. IRMC is our community hospital here in Indiana County and they do a fabulous job of taking care of our residents, uh, taking care of our children, our senior citizens, providing access to affordable health care at a top quality institution with very fine doctors right here at home. But also as a husband and a father of three children, I think it's essential to know that you've got a community hospital that if one of your kids gets sick, uh, you can drive down the road and you can get there and they can get that uh, access to healthcare that they need and they can get it almost instantaneously. It gives you a peace of mind knowing that your own children and your own family is gonna be taken care of when they need it. As expected in a community of caring, the support and involvement is reciprocal. Many fund drives help support IRMC and the services it provides. 
The annual Teddy Bear Fun Drive, sponsored by Renda Broadcasting, consists of various events held throughout the year to raise money for IRMC's pediatric unit, as well as the Free Care Fund at Children's Hospital. The most anticipated event of the Teddy Bear Fun Drive is the B.E. Taylor Christmas Concert held at the Kovalchik Center and Athletic Complex, with the primary sponsor being s and Bank. $113,000 was raised as a part of the 2013-2014 drive. In total, the Teddy Bear Fund Drive has raised over $2 million. Through the Indiana Healthcare Foundation and special initiatives, contributors, large and small, have been active supporters of IRMC. Other key supporters of IRMC include s and Bank, First Commonwealth Bank, Diamond Drug and Medical Supply, Colonial Motors, Homer City Generating Station, Reliant Holdings, Luther Ford Lincoln, and Energy Genon. The Indiana Healthcare Foundation offers a variety of ways for the community to be involved, including charitable gift planning, corporate community projects, and volunteer support. Among the areas receiving support from the community through the foundation are palliative care, which addresses physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of families faced with serious illness, Birdie's Closet, which provides personal care and appearance items to women undergoing cancer treatment, and the Give Life Twice Cord Blood Program for the Dan Berger Cord Blood Program in Pittsburgh. A major component of the Indiana Healthcare Foundation is assisting patients with healthcare costs in a range of areas including the Center for Wound Healing, Women's Imaging Center, the Pediatric Department, Diabetes Fund, and the Empower Center for Health, which supports firefighters and patients not eligible for Medicaid, but with insufficient income to cover medical costs. The partnership of Indiana and IRMC creates a true community of caring that has endured for 100 years and sets the stage for a second century of caring and sharing. Indiana, Pennsylvania has the best of both worlds. Small town charm and big city services are all available in the same area. The person who lives next door knows your family, cares about the neighborhood, and works in the area too. Indiana Regional Medical Center has small town charm. It is run and operated by your neighbors. The staff, nurses, and doctors are a part of Indiana, both in and out of their role at the hospital. In a world of big city corporate hospitals and national chains, Indiana Regional Medical Center has remained an independent and locally run healthcare provider. Larger hospitals focus on concentrating services to control costs. For patients, this can require driving a long way to see your doctor or receive various kinds of care. IRMC is different. Their focus is to bring specialists, technology, and a wide array of health care options to the Indiana region. I think a lot of the hospitals in the area have felt the pressure from some of the, the bigger hospitals in Pittsburgh in an attempt to more or less take over these hospitals. And it hasn't been done kindly and it hasn't been done successfully. And I, I think the independence at Indiana Hospital has maintained over the years has been a true benefit to them. I think the people in the community feel that they own IRMC, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, it's an advantage being the sole hospital here, um, but I think that's probably the biggest plus that we have. Um, I'm not sure you're ever able to reproduce that in the city when you have so many hospitals. In the past 100 years, as Indiana has grown, so has IRMC. Designed from the start to be an integral part of the community, the hospital remains at its location next to Mack Park. IRMC really is Indiana's medical center. When I first came to town, I would say, you know, a number of encounters would, would, would be negative as I was out in the community and, 
And that really has totally flipped. I mean, you know, I'd say nine times out of 10, and I rarely go anywhere without somebody sharing their experience, you know, at the hospital with me. Um, you know, they're, they're very positive. And I think the numbers would bear out that, you know, we've seen market share growth of almost 30% in the last 15 years. Um, you know, we've more than doubled in terms of our overall revenues. So it's more than just a perception and a feeling. I mean, the numbers bear out that we clearly have, you know, changed in our image and reputation. And even working with the, the business uh, school students here, we've done a series of, uh, you know, uh, uh, surveys in the community about the impressions of the hospital. And those numbers have gone up every year and very, very statistically significantly. So I think, uh, again, it's the people and the nurses and, and all the people over there are really the ones that make the difference. It's not me. I can guarantee you that. Well, I, I'm hoping that IRMC stays an independent hospital. I think that it serves a vital role here in our community to, for the health of our community. And also, um, being independent uh, gives a different flavor to this hospital. We're not a subsidiary of some huge monster out of a major urban area. Um, we're our own entity. So when you walk through those doors, you know that you can get to see the CEO or you can get to see a doctor on call and you're not going to be run around through five layers of bureaucracy because this is the hospital here. And I think that that's, that's a very nice thing for patients to feel like when they walk through the door, that they have some control. When you're in some of the, the huge urban hospitals, um, I think people are they're following dotted lines on the, on the floor to get from one place to another, and they feel kind of lost and overwhelmed. I do think there's a strong sense of ownership. I think people feel this is their hospital. And uh, what I like, most of the people live here, work here. You know, it's your friends and neighbors taking care of patients, which I think also makes a difference. The Indiana region is home to many successful businesses and organizations like Indiana University of Pennsylvania, Diamond Drugs Incorporated, s and Bank, and IRMC that provide opportunities and employment to the region. IRMC means local ownership. People in town who feel invested in the community. Uh, most of the people that work here live here. Uh, I think it's the second largest employer in the county. I'm really proud of the fact that we've been voted a best place to work 15 times by our employees, and including uh, Fortune 100 and best place to work in healthcare, which is national. Um, so, I mean, that's to me what it's all about because, you know, I believe that as employees feel like they're treated, that translates into the patient and family. And so, um, you know, the building that culture was probably the biggest, uh, biggest thing we had to overcome. Keeping healthcare affordable is important to avoid merging with a large corporate chain, but to also share and control costs. IRMC has proposed an affiliation with the boards of directors of Clarion Hospital and Punxsutawney Hospital for early 2015. Though not considered a merger, this new step provides IRMC with the opportunity to expand the network of specialty physicians, improve access, and most importantly, remain independent with local governance and boards. I think the overall landscape is going to change, and I think our ability to expand will, will continue. So challenging times create opportunities, and we're looking for those. Some of the local hospitals that have been involved with some of the Pittsburgh hospitals have not fared all that well, and they suffered economically as a result. But I think um, that maintaining its independence has been one of the, the crucial factors in the success of Indiana Hospital. You know, it's the safe place that everyone knows they can go when uh, something bad happens. So I think there is a lot of pride uh, in the place. And uh, I don't know if that was true 30 years ago when I came to town, but I really kind of get that feeling now that uh, people feel that it's their hospital. At IRMC, you'll be treated like one of the family. When I came down, I just saw an organization that had so much potential and great people and a great market to be in and the proximity to Pittsburgh, uh, the opportunity for demographic growth and certainly the university and seeing some banks headquartered here all really uh, spoke to um, you know the opportunity and so we came down and interviewed and 
you know, they were fortunate enough to ask me to come, and uh, so that was in February of 1999. And, you know, we have five children. It's been a wonderful place to have a family. And when I established the 100-year uh, centennial committee to try to do, you know, the best that we could to celebrate, um, geez, oh man, I mean, this is quite a milestone. And, you know, when I first came to town, I would say, you know, a number of encounters would be negative as I was out in the community. and. And that really has totally flipped. I mean, you know, I'd say nine times out of 10, and I rarely go anywhere without somebody sharing their experience, you know, at the hospital with me, from just the most humblest of beginnings to really growing and, and, and being what it is today. It's more than just a perception and a feeling. I mean, the numbers bear out that we clearly have, you know, changed in our image and reputation. And this, this transcends any person or transcends any even group or generation. I mean, it is because of the hard work, sweat, sacrifice of generations before that give us the chance to remain independent today. I mean, we think of boards that were wise decades ago and doctors and nurses and staff that have worked so hard and I'm really proud of the fact that we've been voted a best place to work 15 times by our employees and including uh, Fortune 100 and best place to work in healthcare which is national um, so I mean that's to me what it's all about because you know I believe that as employees feel like they're treated that translates into the patient and family. Probably going to be expanding uh, in terms of vascular cardiology. I do think the whole IT uh, over the next five years will continue. We're on our journey to fully electronic medical record. You know, we're on that journey now. And so by the end of the five year period, I'm sure we'll have a fully integrated medical record. And that is a powerful thing. We have to be cutting edge in, in what we're providing, and so I feel we've done a good job of that. It will be good for patients, no doubt about it. We'll probably be asked to do more, not less, as long as we're independent, to really care for our community, because we know that we are a high-quality provider. Almost any metric you want to look at, we're very, very competitive. I feel like the community feels like they own Indiana Regional. The biggest thing that I would say that we were able to do was to have people believe in themselves that they could be the best hospital in the country. So we'll look forward to uh, trying to keep everybody uh, moving forward in this next hundred years.